Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on organic molecules. We're going to talk about hydrocarbons, both saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons, and cyclic hydrocarbons. We'll talk about functional groups, which are groups of atoms that are appended to hydrocarbons to give them certain reactive properties, and we'll talk about polymers, which are essentially semi-infinite uh, linkages of polymers. Organic chemistry derives uh, its uh, special properties, the property of life, for example, because of the special properties of carbon. We all know that carbon is in group four of the periodic table, and so it has four valence electrons. What that allows us, it to do is to make four bonds to covalent bonds to other molecules. So for example, with hydrogen, you can form a simple hydrogen carbon double bond by sharing two electrons between a carbon and a hydrogen atom. You can do this up to four times for each carbon atom, and if we add four hydrogens to carbon, we make the methane molecule. The other thing you can do with carbon is to make carbon-carbon uh, covalent bonds, and if we do that, we can make ethane out of two carbon molecules, uh, carbon atoms, and six hydrogen atoms, three on each carbon. Uh, we can continue to make these chains with propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, and octane for a whole family of uh, straight chain hydrocarbons. You'll recognize octane as a major component of gasoline. Now, we d developed a shorthand notation for these chains because writing all the dots and, and the letters uh, gets cumbersome. And so you can write the formula for octane in this way. But for long-chained hydrocarbons, this is also a little bit cumbersome. And so we've developed another shorthand which represents the carbon-carbon bonds as segments in this uh, jointed chain. And so uh, you can represent octane by um, seven of these linked bonds, uh, the end of uh, each segment uh, is represents a carbon atom, and each joint in the chain represents a carbon atom. And so the end carbons have three hydrogens that are on them, and everything in the middle has two hydrocarbons. We can simplify this further by just writing the uh, chain and understanding that all of the vacant uh, valencies on each carbon atom uh, are filled with hydrogen atoms. This would be a saturated hydrocarbon. And so really, octane looks like this with um, all of the hydrogen atoms and carbon atoms, but we represent it symbolically by just the zigzag line. Now carbon, in addition to forming double bonds, uh, single bonds, you can form a double bond between two carbon atoms. And the simplest one of these is ethene, which is C2H4. Here, remember, each carbon can make four bonds. Uh, each carbon makes two bonds to the other carbon, and so the other two bonds can be taken up by hydrogen. Now, just as for saturated hydrocarbons, these unsaturated hydrocarbons, which don't have the full complement of hydrogen atoms because of the carbon-carbon double bonds, can be represented by these stick figures. Propene, for example, which is CH2, CH, CH3, can be represented in this shorthand notation where we have the um, just the sticks representing the carbon-carbon bonds, but one of these sticks is doubled uh, to represent the carbon-carbon double bond. There are lots of unsaturated hydrocarbons, propene, 1-butene, which says that um, butene uh, says that there are four carbon atoms, 1-butene says that uh, there is a double bond between, starting with carbon atom number 1, 2-butene has the double bond starting with carbon atom number 2, as you list them in order from left to right. Uh, there's propine, which has a carbon-carbon triple bond, 1,3-butadiene, which has two double bonds, one between carbon atoms 1 and 2, and the second one between carbon atoms 3 and 4, or 2,4-hexadiene. So there are systematic names for these things. There are also cyclic hydrocarbons. Cyclopentane has uh, five carbons in a ring. Each carbon atom has two hydrogen atoms attached to it. Cyclohexane has six uh, carbon atoms in a ring. 1,3-cyclohexadiene is like cyclohexane, except it has um, two carbon-carbon double bonds, and the first one starts with carbon atom number one, and the second one starts with carbon atom three. 
Cyclohexatriene has the special name benzene. Benzene um, has uh, six carbon atoms in a ring with three double bonds. Uh, that makes each carbon atom have one extra valency for uh, making a carbon-hydrogen bond, and we normally represent benzene by the shorthand notation where we just write the ring and three double bonds. Now, in addition to hydrocarbons, we have functional groups, and there are lots of different kinds of functional groups that can be attached to hydrocarbons to give them special reactive properties. So, for example, halides uh, can be formed by substituting one of the or one or more of the hydrogen atoms with a halogen atom, uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and so forth. And so we have chloromethane, one, two, dichloroethane, where we've replaced two of the hydrogen atoms uh, with uh, chlorine atoms, and two bromopentane, where we would have a chain of five. Um, carbon atoms, and on carbon atom number two, numbering from the left-hand side, uh, we've replaced one of the hydrogen atoms with a bromine atom. And so this is how we keep our stick notation uh, for some of the functional groups like halides. Like halides, there are alcohols which have OH groups instead of a, a halide. Here are four examples of simple alcohols. Uh, we have aldehydes, which include the functional group CHO, a carbonyl with a carbon-hydrogen bond. Uh, formaldehyde is the simplest of these. Acetaldehyde has two carbons instead of one, where you have CH3CHO. And butylaldehyde has four carbon atoms, the last of which has this CHO functional group in it. Ketones also uh, employ the CO or carbonyl functional group, but instead of doing it at the end of the molecules where you get a CHO, you do it in the middle of the molecule. And so, for example, the simplest ketone is acetone, which has a carbonyl group capped by two methyl groups. There's methyl ethyl ketone, which is a little bit more complicated, and cyclohexanone, which is like cyclohexane, but where two of the hydrogen atoms have been replaced by a CO double bond. Acids, uh, organic acids, are similar, and they um, employ the functional group COOH, so a carbonyl group with an OH group instead of just an H like you'd find with an aldehyde. There's acetic acid, which is vinegar, benzoic acid, and trifluoroacetic acid, many different types, but they all have the COOH functional group. Last, we want to look at polymers, and polymers are very long chains of molecules, usually formed by taking a simple molecule and linking them up head to tail, uh, one right after another. So a simple example would be to take vinyl alcohol, which has two carbons and a carbon-carbon double bond with an OH group on one of the carbons, and then linking these together by destroying the carbon-carbon double bond and instead having each of the two carbons bonded to another vinyl alcohol molecule. So in this way you form a long, long chain uh, of alternating uh, carbons where every other carbon atom has an OH group on it. So we can generally uh, we can generally represent this as uh, polyvinyl alcohol where we indicate the repeat unit and in parentheses uh, write the subscript N to emphasize that this unit repeats many many times. Real polymers consists of distributions of uh, polymer chain lengths with different lengths but they're all generally very long. So these are macromolecules which have generally very high molecular weights. Vinyl chloride can be polymerized to form polyvinyl chloride, and this is what PVC pipes are made of. There are many different types of polymers, including natural polymers like proteins, DNA, and starches, which are uh, formed by taking different kinds of molecules and linking, the, linking them together in very long chains. Next time, we'll talk about chemical reaction yields, we'll talk about reaction stoichiometry, uh, limiting reactant and percent yield, we'll talk about aqueous ionic reactions and acid-base reactions, and a little bit about oxidation-reduction reactions. We'll see you then.